Let me ask you this. How long do you think it takes to build a one pound combat robot? One day? One month? Several years? I'll give you an example. This is my one pound combat robot hotline. Been making and upgrading it for almost a year now. And the reason is that firstly, you have to come up with what type of robot you'll be creating. Horizontal, vertical spinner, a flamethrower. At least for me, designing the robot took the longest time. Then you just order some parts, assemble them, solder some electronics, and there you have it. It's easy knowing that your next competition is months in advance. But what if you have only a week? You see where I'm going? Let me tell you how this all began. I was getting ready for a competition by upgrading my robot hotline. Then I checked the rules and I saw that one person could bring up to two robots per one discipline. I was planning on bringing only hotline, but then I thought, why wouldn't I bring a second robot? But the heaviest robot that I have besides hotline is Taito 2 and it weighs only 200 grams. Hmm. No one in the 200 gram category even gave a scratch to Taito 2 as it destroyed everyone. So I thought it would still give a hard time for the other one pounders. Having an extra 300 grams let me thicken every wall of the frame, also printing most of the parts with 100% infill. Now, Taito 2 is a solid block of rubber and hopefully it will survive against bigger robots. Here are some of the highlights of Taito 2's performance in Robo Challenge. <laughs> Not the biggest hits that I expected, but being twice as light, I think that's pretty impressive. Then an idea came to me. Wouldn't it be cool to make an actual one pound drum spinner? But the next competition is in a week and to make a brand new robot from scratch? This will be a hard challenge for me. Firstly, I need to design the robot itself. Most of the design was based on my ant weight egg beater Taito 2 and I made it similar, just bigger. Instead of one big chassis, I made the main rails separate so I could print the bases from a harder plastic as I want to have soft main rails. Obviously, no one will machine me a titanium egg beater in a week, so I had to make a 3D printed one with some impact teeth similar to my Drumbotics kit. Now let's 3D print everything. After two days of printing, we have all the parts. Originally, I wanted to cut the base out of carbon fiber like my teammate did for Nyx, but weight is a big factor too. This is my first time making this robot and I have no idea how heavy or big the parts can be. For this reason, I printed the base from carbon fiber nylon and it feels very stiff. Two days left. I haven't thought about electronics whatsoever. That's what this day will be for. I didn't want an extremely fast robot, so I decided to use these Sobots 600 RPM motors that are a bit bigger than the original N20s, and at three cells, these motors could potentially deliver eight amps of power. But what kind of ESC can survive eight amps? I'll have to check my old inventory of ESCs that I was using in my Antweight back in 2019. Most of them can handle 10 amps, but not all of them can operate on three cells or 12 volts. This ESC is the one and only option that could work for me. Soldered a small FS2A receiver and now Taito 2 can drive. Taito 2 is almost complete and the only thing that's left is the weapon system. 
I'll be using a 3D printed polypropylene drum with big M8 steel teeth. It turned out heavier than I thought, and for that reason I needed a powerful but also durable motor. What do I choose? Maybe this one? No. And I'll tell you why. These motors are rounded, and when I press fit it into the soft drum, the touching area will be very small and there's a problem that occurs. The weapon is not centered, and it shakes when I spin it up. Hotline won't compete in this competition for obvious reasons, and its 2006 2750 kV brushless motor is a perfect fit. Quickly soldered in a 35 amp ESC and now all I need is to screw in these four screws that tighten the motor. But here's where I found a problem. The motor can't be attached tightly as this side is soft, so the screws just squeeze the motor into my side as you can see here. Which filament is harder yet still impact resistant? Nylon survived well for the Drumbotics kit's weapons, so that was my choice. Sliced my part, hit print, and after two hours, checked how the part turned out. What the heck is this? My nylon part bent the whole bed. Maybe it wasn't smart to print it on the corner. Placed my side in the center, and hopefully after another two hours, it worked now. Attached the weapon to my side successfully now, and the robot is done. With almost no sleep, I drove to a small town in Latvia called Segolda, where the competition took place. The arena was... oh. No roof. Nyx will compete here also, and imagine what will happen. Test drove my robot, and it looked like everything worked. My first fight was against the horizontal spinner, which was looking kind of scary. This will be an interesting one. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> I won by KO. Don't know why the ref stopped it, because there was no tap out or anything. Taitotu got hidden to his drum, but it didn't affect anything, so there's nothing to worry about. On the other hand, Nyx was dominating everyone with a lot of great hits advancing to the finals waiting for me. And now, can Taitotu's bigger version beat Nyx? We'll find out now. Go. Yeah, I got destroyed, as expected. Nyx is just on another level. Polypropylene really disappointed me and found out that nylon might have been the better option because those PP sides got beat up so badly and the drum cracked in half, whereas the other nylon side survived way better. 
I got the first place still. Again, Nix's drive died, and I won. The second fight was just for fun, and I'm glad we did it. Do you live in Europe, and you want to compete in an ant weight competition? Our club organized an event that includes ant weight 200 gram and ant weight one pound categories. We're also building a brand new two by two meters arena that has no holes, and I can guarantee there will be a lot of entertaining fights as Nix and his new brushless drive motors will arrive. My Hotline's fourth version will be finished with new electronics that fix my latest problems and a whole rebuild of its frame. The 200 gram competition will be interesting too. We expect it to be bigger as 200 gram ant wing category exists in Lithuania for a couple of years now and as the time goes on, more and more competitors from Lithuania and Latvia join to compete. The Sun City Robot Battle 2025 will take place in Shole on March 29th, 2025. The events link is in the description and be sure to ask me any questions whether it's here in the YouTube comments or in my Gmail. I'll answer every one of them. So that was it. We found out that it's possible to build a combat robot in such a short time, but for the Sun Cities event, I'll be upgrading it enough so Taitotu's heavier version really reaches its full potential. But I must ask for y'all's opinion. Would any of you be interested in a one pound drum spinner kit like this one? I know one pound robots are more popular in America. Write your opinions in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.